Hello, everybody, and welcome to Commodity Culture, where our goal is to make you a better investor in the commodity sector. My name is Jesse Day. Before we dive in today's standard disclaimer, nothing here is investment advice. Do your own due diligence. Today is November 18th, 2025, and my guest is the CEO of Element One Hydrogen and Critical Minerals, a Canadian company focused on the exploration, development, and commercialization of geologic hydrogen and critical mineral resources. It's Brad Kitchen. Great to have you on the show. Jesse, great to be here. And thanks very much. You got through that tongue twister quite well. Uh, <laughs> I'm very impressed. Well, thank you. I want to I want to kick the conversation off with discussing hydrogen because this is a commodity that gets far too little press, but is nonetheless vitally important. So for those unfamiliar, could you break down the main uses for hydrogen and reasons why investors in the commodity sector should be paying attention to it? Okay, well, we're even taking it one step further other than just hydrogen, which is a, a source of energy. We're natural hydrogen. And I guess the easiest way that I've been relating this is that you've got, you understand a gallon of gas. And a gallon of gas has the same energy as a kilogram of hydrogen. So gallon of gas right now, you're looking at a price in the U.S. at about $3.60, $3.65. There is green hydrogen, which is good, clean, environmentally friendly hydrogen that's, that, however, is generated by the use of hydroelectric power or wind turbines. So it's very clean, very, very positive for the environment. But the cost base on that is, is about $7.80. So although it's very good for the environment, your energy cost compared to a regular gallon of gas is a little prohibitive. What Element one is providing is something called natural hydrogen, which is as green or more green, I would argue more green than green hydrogen. And it's a lot less expensive to produce. Our cost in the USGA can verify, has verified some of these numbers. Our cost for a kilogram of hydrogen will be about 50 to 70 cents, depending on the type of nat natural hydrogen it is. So what we're doing, I guess my, my, elevator pitch from floor two to floor one is simply that we're coming up with a cleaner, more natural, obviously, form of energy at a significantly lower cost base than what you can get in traditional markets, traditional energy markets. So when it comes to hydrogen, in terms of extraction, you're talking about that natural hydrogen is obviously superior to the manufactured version this is something I was unaware of and something you highlight in one of the slides in your investor presentation. Could you dive into a bit more details? What is simulated, nat uh, simulated hydrogen? How is that created? And just maybe shed some more light on why natural hydrogen is the superior form. Sure. Well, and that, that's the crux of our whole company. And this is the company itself is built effectively on four columns. And those four columns include technology, projects, our implementation of the technology, and then joint ventures. But the, there's three different types of natural hydrogen that the company is going to be focusing on. And this is very different than other companies which focus on one or two. There's a, uh, there's a couple of very strong companies, very well-funded companies working in areas such as Kansas, and these are Coloma and Hyterra. And they're drilling for natural hydrogen in accumulation um, in environment. So effectively, like a traditional oil and gas, this hydrogen accumulates under a dome effectively over, over millions of years. And they're drilling primarily right now in Kansas and, and looking to do this. We are also doing that, and we're doing that in a different location. Um, and we'll be announcing that in the next couple of weeks that we'll be going into that accumulation play. The second form of natural hydrogen is one where you're using technology to go into old oil and gas wells and extract the hydrogen from those old oil and gas wells. You've got all the infrastructure in place. You will be actually creating some more oil and gas from that, but basically using existing infrastructure and using the existing oil wells to, to generate hydrogen using our new technology. And last but not least, and what gives us a real differentiation is stimulated hydrogen. 
And what we're doing with that is it's our proprietary technology that we're developing with Columbia University in New York. And this is our technology. It's not a licensed technology, but it's technology that allows us to extract hydrogen from ultramafic rocks. And through that process of extracting hydrogen from ultramafic rocks, we also create the byproduct of, say, uh, other critical minerals like nitrogen, um, like nickel. So something that nobody has done before, going in and, and ultramafic rocks take up 10% of the globe. These rocks are virtually everywhere and we have the technology where we can convert the hydrogen from these rocks and create energy from that so that's really the big point of differentiation we will be exploring all three natural hydrogen um in fact have three natural we have projects and technology in all three different natural hydrogen sources and that differentiates us from from other companies well, I want to talk about critical minerals. You noted that critical minerals such as nickel, cobalt, and PGMs can pre be produced through solution mining as a part of hydrogen extraction. Could you walk us through how that process works? And with critical minerals in the spotlight recently, how important is it to bring domestic production of these metals online? Well, it's critical. Our projects right now, they're in British Columbia and they're in Alaska. Um, so we're looking at Canadian and U.S. assets primarily. But as I was mentioning, we're not location agnostic. This is something that we could be implementing globally. Um, the critical minerals is a byproduct from this one process of extraction of natural hydrogen. So is it something that, well, for us, it's a very good revenue stream. If we have a nickel, um, if the nickel in the ultramafic rocks is, is roughly around 2%, it means that the nickel solution that we extract from these ultramafics will actually generate more revenue for us than the hydrogen that we were originally seeing. So it's, it's like the big cherry on top. It's not just a cherry on top, it's the big one. So I, I hope that addresses what you were asking. Yeah, I want to dive deeper into how Element One is going about this hydrogen and critical minerals extraction. I want to start off with an overview of the company and by reading um, a quote from your website, which calls the company an exploration company pioneering a tripartite approach that combines the emerging field of geologic hydrogen exploration with critical mineral minerals extraction and carbon sequestration. Can you dive into the details, help us unpack that and provide an overview of your process? I will. Uh, and again, the company's really based on these columns or, or product silos that I'll say. So we have the technology to do the extraction of hydrogen from rocks. This is what we've developed with Columbia. We have the best people in, in Grishma Gatakota who's with Columbia has developed this process that we're acquiring from her. So it's not a license, it is an actual acquisition and that that will allow us to extract the hydrogen from the rocks. Um, I'm just, I'm repeating myself a little bit. So it, it, we, we break it down the fact that we've got the people, the best people that the best geologists out there and the best technicians um, to help build on the it, basically the extraction of, of the hydrogen. And this is something that it is a new industry. So it is, it, everything that we're doing is, is relatively new. But our point of differentiation is that we've also got the boots on the ground. So other people have been trying to develop this tech, but interestingly enough, they get their rocks from Amazon. Whereas we have the geologists, we have the projects. Tim Johnson has put together the right group of projects and the right team to make sure that we can source the correct ultra matrix, that we can do our research, that we can get into the field testing stage. So that's that in effect is, is where we are right now. You alluded to it a little bit in your overview of the company, but could you shed some more light on the team behind Element One, how you plan to leverage their expertise and maybe start with your own background and, and how you came to become CEO of the company? Well, thanks. That's actually a really cool question because not only do we have the technology, not only do we have the projects, um, we also have the geologists that can implement 
what we want to do from an operations perspective. But from a corporate perspective, you have the chairman and Kyler Hardy, who is an extremely aggressive, very good entrepreneur. Uh, we sat down one day with Tim Johnson, who's our CEO of the company. And basically, together, they outlined the path of where we can take this new industry of natural hydrogen and how element one can benefit from the various projects and technology out there. So those two turned to me um, about a year ago and asked that I come on board initially as president. I've been recently appointed as CEO uh, because we've had a lot of experience in the past as far as taking projects. Uh, there was a gold project that I worked on in Quebec where we took it from zero to bankable feasibility in a period of five years sold that to Osisco, and last year Osisco just sold that for $1.6 billion. That was the Windfall Lake project. I'm mentioning that because that's important to see that we can take grassroots-based uh, projects and take them into bankable feasibility, prove something, generate the asset. Another company that I did recently was a, a gold tailings company. The market cap on that in... July of 2024, so only about a year and a bit ago, was $3 million. They needed to raise $10 million to put their mill into production. I came on board as president. Uh, we took a market cap from $3 million up to $100 million in May when I left of this year. So we have a very aggressive stance on developing uh, value for our shareholders. We want to be in a position where as we acquire projects, we're not diluting the company. Uh, we can do a lot of this relatively inexpensively. We're not too dilutive, uh, but we're looking to focus on on building the market cap of Element 1 and, and put it into the position where we will be in the forefront of natural hydrogen. Fantastic. Well, could you shed some light on the company's cash position, how much runway that cash gives you, and what the strategy is for raising capital as needed moving forward? Okay, well, we've got a very strong and tight shareholder base. So the company itself, between management and a, a few strategic investors, we own or control roughly 80% of the shares. There's only 34 million shares outstanding. So you've got a public float of about three to four million shares. What we're doing now is we've just changed the name recently. Uh, we've just got the new trading symbol. We're just starting to do the marketing. I really appreciate you reaching out to your clients and helping us expose the new name. And we're we're getting the message out of what we actually have. And, and the company does have the projects, the technology, the people. And again, to remind you of the people, CEO of the company, the one who put together this 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 brainchild of of natural resources, a gentleman by the name of Tim Johnson. And Tim has brought on uh, Rishma Gattakoto, who is a, a lecturer, not a lecturer, she's a, um, a professor at Columbia, where she's developing the technology for the hydrogen extraction. And then we've also got Allegra Hosford Shire, who is one of the top geologists in natural hydrogen and uh, the accumulation side of, of the business. These are people, Allegra and Rishma are both in the States. Um, there's now starting to become new natural hydrogen conferences. They're the ones that are speaking. These are the ones that are chairing these conferences. Other companies don't have that and they're just getting going. So we're going to be going from zero to, to 60 quite quickly. Uh, and we've got the infrastructure and we have the team to do that. Again, what we have as well is the experience in building the market cap of the company. Uh, personally, I've raised about 125 million for venture capital companies. Uh, being able to create value in actual hard assets and in hard value for these shareholders and should be in a position that with our existing shareholder base, be able to access the capital markets, let's say sometime in the next three or four months for about four to $5 million with an additional $20 million by the end of next year. That will cover our acquisition costs of, of the claims that we're looking for and also our research development. And what are the main catalysts and news flow that shareholders of Element One 
can look forward to as we close out the year and head into 2026? Actually, Jesse, that's a really important point. With what we're doing and with the various silos that we have, you're going to have information coming from us on a weekly basis. So there are new projects. There are new technology benchmarks. There are new technologies in the oil and gas extraction. There are new claims that we're going to be picking up in the States for um, accumulation plays. There are new people coming on board. There will be new hard rock projects. There will be results from those hard rock projects. It, it, it's really going to be a snowball effect. And, and as we build, um, there's going to be more and more information. And that's extremely important in the natural hydrogen area because it's a new industry. People are just becoming familiar with it. So there will be a lot of information. Our site will be a very good place for people to come to. We're going to try and do more discussions like this. When something comes up, how it impacts even in the industry, how does that impact Element 1? How does the work that Element 1 does impact other people in the industry? So that's, it's, it's fun. It's a bit of a daunting task, to be honest, but it's fun being at the leading edge of that, this huge tidal wave that's coming. So what's the plan moving forward for growing the company and getting it to the market cap that it needs to be at that you envision into that bankable uh, feasibility? Jesse, I think that's the most important part for my job right now. And that is to get the message out and show people that the value of the company is far greater than where we are right now as far as our market cap. Uh, the intention is to do what we've done recently with other companies and take it from where we are right now, which is about a 5 million market cap. Our target is to get to 20 to 30 to 40 million before the end of March and then continue to grow the company as we get more assets and as we hit some of those technology benchmarks. We'll be working a lot also down in the States. We're going to get our OTCQB listing. We have had a very good following so far in Europe. We'll be branching out and, and hitting targeted investors in the European market. I think it's critical now, as I mentioned, that we've got a very tight investor group with 80% of the shareholders. We want to expand that, but we're not going to do it on a random basis. We're going to be doing it with targeted, focused investors and ones that will help get the message out, help people understand that Element One really is the place you want to be in this new natural hydrogen environment. Great. Well, I'm going to put links in the description below to Element One's website as well as social media so people can follow along with the company. Thank you so much, Brad, for coming on the show. It's been a blast. Jesse, I really appreciate this. I look forward to doing it again and give you an update on, on things that we've done over the next two or three months. Thank you very much. Commodity Culture is a series on commodities and natural resources. If you would like to see more, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification so you're always up to date with the latest episodes.